Uh-oh. Where should I look at comments? We're live. Hey. <laughs> oh, you know, Where the should only I thing go? I don't, and we're live, guys. Hey, hey, guys, it's uh, hey. Kendra and I are just going to have a conversation. It's my bad. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that little tag of mine up in your head. Hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well. Um, let me get that tag out of her head. Oh, I don't Ooh. like that either. There we go. There it is. Boom. Look at me. I'm Look magical. That. Show off my hair. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> you can't interrupt my, right. my fabulous no, hair. It, it's Ted Bogert. And of course, it's the Ted Show and the one and only insanely intelligent, insightful Kendra Davies with Stellar Life Coaching. What's up? Hello, hello. How are you? I'm All right. Excellent. So I, I kind of like this angle. I miss. I miss a little bit of the background, but not really. And so, I don't know. I kind of like it. You're right. I like it good. too. I, I like I like seeing your face nice and big. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm moving. Here I go. Oh, I feel so much better. So tell us, tell us. Um, yeah, there you are. You're all, you're all, you're all sparkly. Here we go. Luis, what's up, my friend? Tyler, what's up? How are you? Uh, hey, everybody. Love you guys too. This this uh, this topic, right? So you you yes. mentioned this uh, a couple weeks ago to me, and I just mm-hmm. t- tucked it away because nobody really really wants to think they have the power of choice. No, so um, I believe people really prefer not to. <laughs> I don't want to know that I'm in control and I can choose. So mm-hmm. give us a little background on this topic, why you thought it was would be a good one, and let's take a deep dive. Sure. So um, the power of choice is it piggybacks on taking radical responsibility, which we talked about a few weeks ago. And the idea behind the power of choice is that you are always choosing, always. Like uh, the average person is making thousands of decisions a day from what am I gonna wear? What am I gonna, what am I gonna eat? Uh, You know, which way am I gonna go to work? I mean, when we, when we went to work, you know, we had to do that. Uh, <laughs> what am I going to wear into the living room? You know what I mean? Like, um, we're constantly making decisions. We are always choosing. And I think that in the world uh, for those tangible things, it's really easy for people to understand that they are always choosing. But when it comes down to our mental states, our emotional well being, we often, and this is what you were talking about, kind of like don't recognize that we are choosing. And a lot of my work right. with clients, with executives, with teams is recognizing when you are behaving outside of your values and what does that mean and what does that look like? And a lot of the resistance that I get from people is really about taking ownership for the fact that they're choosing to behave, live, act, think uh, outside of their own values. like their response is like, who would choose to do that? I'm like, exactly. That's exactly why we have to have this conversation, (laughs) right? Because you are always choosing. You choose your words, you choose the confrontation, you choose to stay in relationships that don't serve you, you choose to stay in jobs that are not fulfilling, that you hate with bosses you don't like. Like, you are constantly choosing. And there's two parts to the power of choice. One is recognizing that you're choosing, and the second one is changing the choice. Mm. So I, I have to tell you that I'll throw some things out at you that I'm thinking, of course. Yes, Joe mm-hmm. Stewart, Joe Stewart said, she said you have a big face. I do have a big face. It's insane. That's a big, um, beautiful face. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I know, Joe. <laughs> Joe Stewart. You gotta follow that up. Um, with so the I the, the whole time you're the whole time you're talking about it, I'm thinking, oh no, I'm not, I don't want to take that on. Mm-mm. No, I don't want <laughs> to. I don't want to be responsible for my choices because that make that I can't blame it on anything anymore. So mm-hmm. I can't say, well, I had a horrible childhood, so I'm just this way, or um, I only like that type of girl or guy, and so I'm just happen to be that way. I know it's a repeat and it's horrible and it breaks my heart mm-hmm. every time. But so we don't want to. I, I really believe it. We just don't want to have that choice. We say we do, but we don't. Yeah. I don't know if it's not wanting to. I think for the majority of people that I work with, it's really about 
they just don't believe that they're choosing it. You know, like right. uh, a lot of the times when I work with people around boundaries, right? People are like, well, I set the boundary and they kept violating it. I'm like, well, the boundary wasn't for them. It was for you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't set the boundary to control your behavior. I set the boundary to control my behavior. Correct. And that is the power of choice. Like when I choose to be in a relationship with somebody, in my mind, I am making a choice to show up a certain way. And it is a way that I'm going to show up that is not conditional to how you show up, right? This is how I choose to show up in a relationship. If it's a friendship or with my sweet boo Ted, like the whichever way I choose to show up, that's my choice. Doesn't matter what you do or how you show up. Now, when you start to violate the boundaries, right? When you act inappropriately or you do something that hurts my feelings, it's then my job with radical responsibility to come in and say, this is the thing that hurt my feelings. This is what I would like moving forward. And if that person doesn't wanna meet you, if you continue to stay, that is your choice. That people don't is the like thing to that hear people... that though. And that's, no, guess, that's, what's, of course not. that's what's so fascinating. Cause we used to, I, I might've said it on a show before, we used to do that with the kids. Mm -hmm. uh, when they would be mad or upset, well, you're, you're choosing that mm. you're choosing that reaction that emotion right because we talked a little bit about that in the past too nobody sure. wants to admit that they're choosing their emotion nobody wants no. to admit that they're choosing how they react or what yeah. their expectation like you just mentioned earlier um i don't think a lot of people would come in and say it's it's just i'm going to go in and uh this is about me and my boundaries they'd be like well if sh if you act up i'm gonna act up that's it that's <laughs> it which is also a choice like you're always choosing. So whichever way you go. So I want to be clear that I don't think that you choose your emotions. Like you feel what you feel yes. in reaction to the stimulus. Like you don't really actually have any control over that. You have control over your reaction. Yeah. So if I could tweak what you were talking about to the kids, it's like, I see that you're upset. I see that you're hurt. I see that you're angry, right? If you look at it through this lens, then it makes sense that you're angry. An alternative, a different <laughs> choice that we could make is to perceive it through this lens, right? right? Like at the end of the day, we get to choose how we're going to react to the situation and the stories that we are going to buy into. And I find that a lot of the resistance to choice comes from like the wires got crossed. Like when we were younger, we learned a, that love looked a certain way, that Correct. it felt a certain way, and that people interacted a certain way. And this is what women do, and this is what men do, and this is what life is supposed to be like by this age. We have these ideas. We think that we're working towards that goal, and it's just arbitrary. We're not connected to it. It's not meaningful. And then it doesn't work for us. And then we're unhappy. And then we get confronted. And the resistance comes in because at the end of the day, we don't want to say that we chose it. But the reality is that based on what I knew and what I brought to the table, I did choose it. I did. Correct. And part of doing the work is taking full ownership. If I own that I'm choosing this, then guess what I'm empowered to do? Change yeah. it. If I'm not choosing this, if this life is just happening to me and I am a victim the entire time, what am I going to do? I've completely stripped myself of my power. I have no choice. Well, victim, a lot of times on the victim mentality, people, that becomes a way of life. It's like a lifestyle. It's like, it's their defense mechanism, their coping mechanism. Sure. I mean, it's just, it's everything, but they, they've gotten into, we've talked about this on the show before too, you get your comfort mm -hmm. zone. And even mm -hmm. though from the outside, it looks like it's a horrible place to be, it's yeah. still where you're comfortable where you're choosing to be because it's easy. It's maybe not easier. The devil, but you know. Yes, the devil, you know exactly. Mm -hmm. So yesterday and I chose. I chose. Uh, I want. I thought about this and I was going to share it today. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I got up on the wrong side of the bed and I just was not having it. Nothing was working. The internet mm -hmm. stream yard yesterday was a nightmare. Oh, yeah. I had this this shirt that I wanted to wear and the button wouldn't button. And I'm throwing Sons of bitches. Temper, I mean, seriously, temper tantrum. And Stacy's like, what's wrong? What's up? Nothing. And I, I was in, I could have just said, honey, can you do this? And I was mm -hmm. just determined to be pissed off. Mm -hmm. I was determined that I was going to run this 
ragged. And you know what? Afterward, I laughed at myself and thought how embarrassing because we're going to talk about the power of choice tomorrow. And I chose that. Mm -hmm. But we I feel like, and, and we got to give ourselves grace. Like eventually you're going to choose it. And again, remember, since you can't control your feelings, like you feel what you feel, right. but it's learning to recognize that um, I was talking to a therapist on another show, uh, Dominique Barrett, and we were talking about how when it comes to feelings like emotions, especially negative emotions, that's energy in your body and energy doesn't dissipate. It just gets redirected, right? It has yes. to have an exit point or it has to be grounded. The current has to be grounded in order for it to dissipate, right? So at the end of the day, we have to redirect that energy that's really what it comes down to. And when we recognize power of choice, it's not its not saying, okay, well, I'm choosing to be angry, false. It's saying, I am angry, I am frustrated, these things are happening, this is real, I am not a crazy person, this is panning out to be a shit day, yeah? <laughs> dot, 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 what can I do about it? I do not want to be shitty in my head and in my body and, and not feeling well the whole day. So what can I do? Right. I and maybe that means you got to tap out. Maybe that means you tap out. Maybe that means you need to take the rest of this. Maybe that's the universe being like Ted Bogart needs a day off. Well, I think the universe has been saying that a lot lately, but that's sort of how it felt like. It felt like, all right, are you all trying to tell me something is what I kept saying in my head. Uh -huh. Everything was, you know, what's funny is I had gotten up on the right side of the, like I had done my gratitude in the morning and I swear mm -hmm. to God, the minute my feet, my foot hit the floor, something was going wrong. And what mm -hmm. happened, I felt like I was getting caught up in it. You know how you get that roller coaster thing? It's a snowball. Yeah. So yeah. you know what I'm 100%. getting, I call it frothy. I'm getting frothy about this. <laughs> I'm gonna get more like mad dog frothy about it. And and it didn't mm -hmm. matter. And one little thing, if I stepped on something or went the wrong way or the dogs barked, I was not having any of it. But what happens is, so I, I realized I did it. Now, how do I change? So what do I need to do to change that so that that isn't my choice anymore? Yeah, well, I think, Radical responsibility tells us that I am totally responsible for the way that I react to this. I think part of the power of choice is recognizing that we can choose where we build our house, right? Like we get to choose that. So I can wake up and, and things can be shitty. Like we all have shitty days. I've had a shitty decade. You know what I'm saying? So I, I like, <laughs> like, like things can really be hard, right? Yeah. You're not crazy. Honoring that, acknowledging that, and then recognizing that if I need a break, if I need to sit in this, I need to be in the shit. And sometimes I do, Ted, even today, like, you know, um, a client of mine passed away over the weekend and like, oh. I, I canceled, I canceled my clients. I'm giving my sp myself the space to be heavy, you know, because it's, it's fucking heavy, man. It's right. heavy. The world is heavy. This experience is heavy. The emotions are heavy. And you know what? I'm allowed to take space. You're allowed to take space and say, you know what world? I get it. You're important. <laughs> I'm going to take a nap. Right. You know, like you're allowed to tap out if that's what you need to do. If when you look at the choices that you have in front of you, I can choose to perceive this as something that is completely unfixable. Uh, I can attribute all of these negative things to just like life is shit and I'm garbage and I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not smart enough and I'm not pretty enough and I'm not funny enough and I'm not, I'm not enough they're not enough, whatever. I can choose to believe that, or I can say, I'm having a bad day. Tomorrow is going to be better. I'm gonna give myself, what do I need? What do I need? When we start asking the right questions, we can start actually meeting the needs that exist within us, and we have a totally different experience. The day can still be shit. I still had a shit decade, but I did it, I did it self-aware. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> well, I like think people, you... they, they become, I think people become self-aware. I think, I think everybody has those moments where like, okay, this is a pattern. What, what is going on? What's happening? Why am I always feeling like this? Why am I always acting this way? Why does, why does the scenario always end up the same way every single time? And I think Choice. people begin to question, but what they do with it, I think it's very difficult to say, well, it's because I'm making these choices. Mm -hmm. So let's say they get to that, right? I've had friends go, yeah. 
all of my relationships suck because I allowed them to suck. All right, you're in a good mm -hmm. place, right? Because now, now we're we're admitting it. So you allowed mm -hmm. it. What are we going to do to change it? That's where I think people really yeah. get. Uh, they don't know what to do, Kendra. They don't know how yeah. to overcome something that is a a behavior that has been ingrained in them and is part of mm -hmm. the, part of what they believe who they are. Yeah. Well, and first and foremost, I think that it's important to recognize that being in a shitty relationship is not a character trait, right? That's not like like a personality thing. That's not something that we rate on a <laughs> in from a psychological <laughs> perspective. That's not just like you know. <laughs> you're genetically set to have shit relationships. That's not true, That's right? right? Like we learn how to exist. And so I think first you have to zoom out before you zoom in. Everybody wants to get into the granular detail. And the reality is that the power of choice is zooming out and saying, let me see this big picture. I can choose to look at this one relationship in isolation. I can choose to look at all of these relationships. I can zoom even further out and I can pinpoint the feeling. The first time I ever felt like I wasn't good enough right. has nothing to do with my ex-husband, has nothing to do with the father of my son. That feeling has to do with when I was five, the first time I ever felt it. Right. And when you zoom out that far and you see it for what it is, you can be like, holy shit, I'm choosing it, but I am choosing it because I have learned this millions of years ago like this right. is ingrained it is not who i am it is what i do but i don't know another way and if that is where you're at then that is where you seek the help you can get a therapist you can get a coach you can get a mentor i mean you can read books you can listen to podcasts you can begin to explore and peel back the layers of these things given the situation right if it's relationships or work my experience is that if you have garbage relationships, historically, you probably have other issues scattered, salt and peppered throughout. <laughs> so Salt and peppered, that's so gentle. <laughs> <laughs> it's like somebody so, knocking that pepper and salt all over it. <laughs> yeah, but I would say zoom out. And then when you start working with a coach or a therapist or a mentor, like then you can zoom in. Then you can get into the detail because was it Einstein who said you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it? It's like, recognizing that I'm choosing it allows me to make a different choice. Even if that choice is to say, I'm fired from making decisions. Like right. my picker is broken. I don't know how to pick them. My, <laughs> like my love tank is empty. I got <laughs> nothing to give. Like I am not in a position to be coming to the table right now. I need to step back. I need to fill up. I need to read the book, listen to the podcast, get that coach or that mentor, that therapist and do the work to get clear on what I actually want. And I, I believe a lot of times, it's so true. And I believe a lot of times people, it's with any kind of addiction or something, anything that's related to the psyche, if you are in a good place and you are surrounded by people who are gonna continue that negative narrative, like let's say you come to the realization, all right, I've made these choices. I want mm -hmm. to get a therapist. Well, you've got to get away from the people that say therapists suck, coaches suck. Mm. You're never going to get anything out of that. And most, a lot of times, those are the same people who have been feeding this mm -hmm. negativity um, and this pattern because for them, it's yeah. also, interestingly enough, it's familiar and comfortable. Mm -hmm. So you being in the spot that you're in is good mm -hmm. for them in their life for whatever reason. So you exactly. really have to evaluate what's going on in your, in your, in your periphery. For real. And I think that at the end of the day, I am always of the mindset that we are all on a path to love, like all of us. Like, I don't care how rotten you are, or how far <laughs> down the scale you have gone, like you are on a path to love. And the reality is that from our childhoods to the present moment, you have learned how to show up and how to get that love, right? right. And don't get me wrong, I made the sharp left. I was, a, I was a drug addict. I got sober at 14, like between nine and 14, I went from drink, sneaking little sips of alcohol from underneath the cabinet to crack wow. from nine to 14. Like I made the sharp left. I learned that negative behavior got me attention and it got me the things that I wanted, what I thought I wanted, right? That was my path to love. And when that didn't work, I made the sharp right. I got sober and then I was like, well, I. 
I mean, it wasn't immediate. It took me a while. I dropped out of high school. <laughs> but then I went, after I dropped out of high school, after. right? After that, then I went, made that sharp right to achievement and perfectionism, right? Opposite ends of the same spectrum. Right. We're all on a path to love. The idea behind this is if you zoom out and recognize that you're choosing it, then recognize that you can make a different choice. We're not, uh, I don't believe that people are fundamentally bad. I just don't, like, I don't care what you've done. I've done terrible things in my life, right? Terrible things. I am a good person. I did those things. That is not who I am. So no matter where you're at, if it's your job, your career, the way you're parenting, whatever isn't fulfilling, whatever isn't working, whatever isn't fitting, with you, if you are living a life outside of your values, is just a choice. I mean, and then some action. But <laughs> that choice, that choice makes a big difference. So why do you think people fight it? Mm. Uh, we had a question. So why do you think people fight it? Why do people um, push back when I think people always have some sort of inkling that they have a way to do differently, but yet they mm. continue on. Why, why do they choose? I think that's what they're asking. Why do they choose that? So I, I believe that we're, from a psychological perspective, I believe that we're replaying broken cycles from our childhood. So like, for instance, I can tell you that in my romantic relationships, the cycle that has played out is that I'm trying to prove that I'm good enough to earn your love. Do you know what uh -huh. I mean? Like yes, I that's the goal. So, and when I was younger, I tried to show up. I, I begged, I begged, I wanted attention. I wanted to be enough. I wanted to be enough. My dad wasn't in a position to do that. Yeah. He couldn't show up for whatever his reasons were. It doesn't matter what his reasons were. He did not show up. And so I have found that my cycle is in, I need to prove that thought wrong. I have to create a situation where, where dad shows up, yeah. where I am good enough to get that love that that little girl in me desperately wants. And so when you ask me, why do we resist? It's because we don't want that internal fear, the root cause of the cycle. We don't want it to be true. We don't want to surrender to that thought. And so we cr end up actually creating the situations where it happens to us over and over and over again, which is why we end up choosing crappy jobs over and over again. Uh, having the same boss in different organizations, the same relationships, those cycles, they just keep going until we are brave enough to take radical responsibility and make a different choice. I had one person, uh, then we'll wrap up, but I want to get your, your thought on this. One person a while ago said, well, I don't want to admit that there was something that happened in my childhood because that will be a negative reflection on my parents and I don't want my parents to be hurt. And my hmm. thought, my, my, my comment back to them was, well, why are they, why can't you have both? Why can't you say how you're feeling and still explain to your parents and you're not trying to hurt, that's not you're taking billboards out and saying mm -hmm. you people suck and this is the reason why. Um, that's not what they were talking about, but they actually didn't wanna make any kind of move, not even a teeny step, because they sure. thought it would be disrespectful to mm -hmm. parents, relationship, whatever it is, but in this case, it was parents. Yeah, well, I mean, I think that you have to discern. I mean, if you're talking about writing a book, right? Like, so first and foremost, I'm of the mindset that if people don't like the way that you tell the story about how they treated you, they probably should have treated you differently. Yeah. So I don't Amen believe that, that. <laughs> I don't believe that, I don't believe that that is a reason to not tell your story. In fact, the reality is that if you can't own your own story, darling, you are suffering. Yeah. If you can't own it, if you are in the prison where somebody else outside of you who certainly contributed to the, to the dark side of this story, you're afraid that they're going to be hurt. My love, you're hurting yourself. Yes. We have to be able to own our stories in order to change them. And I also think that, I mean, this is too complicated to unpack in six minutes, right? The question in and of itself, like the codependency, the enmeshment, like the things that are tied up in that question are deep. But I would say you have to own your story and if you don't want to own it in a public forum, if it's about writing a book, just take it to your therapist. 
if what you're saying is you can't say the words because you're afraid it's going to hurt their feelings, I, I would say speak to a therapist or a coach, like get some support to really learn to unpack it in a safe space. Great. All right. So um, that was awesome. I learned a lot, hey. as I always do. All right, so how do people reach you, Kendra? What's the best way? Yes, so you can reach me at stellarlifecoaching.com and and we are um, we had rolled out a free 90-day trial of my Evolve online coaching program that is now going live, open to the public, and it's going to be for nine months, and it is discounted at 50% off. So- nice. If you want to get uh, into doing this work in a group setting online from the comfort of your home, we meet the first and the third Thursday of the month. You can go to stellarlifecoaching.com. You can send me a contact form. You can give me a call at 407-203-8933 and learn more about how you can participate either with coaching one-on-one -on -one or with Evolve. Amazing. All right, thank you again for being patient. Kendra's got great patience with me and my insane schedule right now. Uh, that was awesome. So we'll be back next week. I don't know what the topic is. I'm always um, eager to learn, just like all of you are out Roll there. Roll the dice. Roll the <laughs> dice. So, but that was really awesome. Thanks, Kendra. Appreciate all you do. Of course. Thank you, guys. All be right. well. You guys be well. All of the dads out there, if I don't say anything, oh. uh, if I don't hear, have a happy Father's Day. On Sunday, much love to everybody. And thanks for everybody tuning in. We will answer your questions after the show. Thanks, Kendra. Y'all have Thank a you guys. good one. Be well. Happy Thursday. Happy Father's Day. Thank you. Bye, guys.